Hi, now, this is a nice question on roots of a quadratic equation and also solving quadratic inequalities. What we've got here is that we have an equation k plus 3 all multiplied by x squared plus 6x plus k equals 5 where k is a constant and we're told that it has two distinct real solutions for x. And we've got to show that k satisfies this inequality here. k squared minus 2k minus 24 is less than 0. And in part b, we've then got to go on to find the set of possible values of k. Now if this is a question you'd like to have a go at, just give you a moment to pause the video and you can come back and check your work solutions with mine. OK, well let's just see how you've got on. So first of all, what I'd want to do is just copy down the equation that we're given. So in other words, we've got k plus 3 multiplied by x squared, then plus 6x plus k equals 5. Now, I can see that what we've got here is a quadratic equation. But when we have quadratic equations, just to remind you, we always put it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 whenever we want to solve it. And so that means that I've got to subtract 5 from both sides. So therefore we're going to have k plus 3 multiplied by x squared plus 6x then plus k. And if I subtract 5 from both sides we've got k minus 5 equals 0. Now quadratic equations have three terms on the left hand side here. So what we've got to do then is put brackets around this term here so that we can create that one term. So next up we've given this part here that it has two distinct real solutions. You'll often see this written as two distinct or two different real roots for x. And the roots, the solutions of a quadratic equation then, are given by the equation that you should be familiar with, x equals minus b plus or minus the square root then of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Now it's this part inside the square root here that controls the nature of the roots. If b squared minus 4ac is positive, greater than 0, we end up with two solutions for x. Now all of this is covered on my website, examsolutions.net. You've just got to look under roots of a quadratic equation and you'll see plenty of videos on this. So what we want to think of is the bit inside the square root here, b squared minus 4ac. That controls the roots. It's called the discriminant. So what I'm going to write here then is therefore for two distinct roots, let's just put it in, okay, for two distinct roots, or we'll call them solutions because that's the word they've used in the question, okay, we know that b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant, must be a positive value, in other words greater than zero. I'll just put that in those quotations there. Right, OK, so how does that pan out for what we've got? Well, b is the plus 6, OK? We've got the coefficient of x there is plus 6. So we've got, therefore, 6 squared, b squared, minus 4 multiplied by a. a is the coefficient of x squared, which is k plus 3. And then we've got times c. c is this term down here, k minus 5. And all of that's got to be greater than 0. So you can see that I'm starting to head up towards an inequality in k, as we had to get here. So if I expand various terms here, we've got 6 squared, which is 36. I'm going to keep the 4 out the front here and just expand the two brackets. So we've got k squared, k times k there, k squared, and then we've got k times minus 5, which is minus 5k, and then we've got 
plus 3k. So minus 5k plus 3k is minus 2k. And then we've got 3 times minus 5, which is minus 15. And all of this is greater than 0. Let's now multiply out the bracket here with the minus 4. So therefore, what we have is 36 minus 4k squared plus 8k. And then we've got minus 4 times minus 15, which is plus 60. And that is greater than 0. Let's now group together terms. We've got minus 4k squared. Let's put that down. Minus 4k squared. And then we've got the plus 8k. And then 36 plus the 60. Well, that's going to be plus 96. And that's greater than 0. So how does this compare with what we've got up here? Well, I can see that to get k squared, I've got to divide by negative 4 to remove the minus 4. Now you've got to be very careful here because if you divide by any negative number you must turn the inequality round. So if I divide by minus 4, let's just put this here, divide by minus 4, then what we're going to have for this first term is going to be k squared. For this second term it's going to be minus 2k and 96 divided by minus 4 is going to give us minus 24. Then we must reverse the inequality and 0 obviously divided by minus 4 is 0. And that's what we had to show. Okay? Now for part B, hence find the set of possible values of k. Well to do this, what we would normally want to do is find the critical values for this inequality. In other words, we want to find out where this would equal 0. Well, we factorize this. This one will factorize. What we've got is two brackets. And we've got a k in the front and two values that multiply together to give minus 24. Well, they're going to be a minus 6 and a plus 4. And I can see that when this is expanded, we're going to have minus 6k plus 4k, which is minus 2k. And this is going to be less than 0. But we need to find these critical values. We need to find out the values that would make this equal to 0. So I'm going to put in here, therefore, the critical values. All right, and I would definitely encourage you to write something like this. Critical values are when, let's say, it's when k minus 6 or k plus 4 equals 0. Remember, if this equals 0, k minus 6 would equal 0 or k plus 4 would equal 0. And this would lead to the two critical values k equals 6 or k equals minus 4 when we solve those two equations. So, how do we use these critical values? Well, if you've seen my tutorials in the past on solving quadratic inequalities, you'd realize that we approach this by a sketch. Sketching the graph of y equals k minus 6 times k plus 4, for instance, in this particular example. And if I sketch that graph, it's going to be a parabola, U-shaped, okay? And these critical values will be the points where it crosses this axis here. It's not going to be the x-axis in this example. It's going to be the k-axis. So those critical values, if we mark them on, one at minus 4, one at 6, gives us a parabola then, something like this. Okay, it's only a sketch, so it doesn't need to be particularly good, but there you go. That's the kind of thing that we would have. And that curve that I've just drawn in here is the graph then of y equals this quadratic here, k squared minus 2k minus 24, k squared minus 2k minus 24. Or the equivalent to that is just those two brackets there. 
Now, what we're looking for is when this quantity, I've called it y, okay, is less than zero, and that is when the graph for this particular problem is below the k axis, okay? Because those values will be negative values. So what we're interested in is the range of values across here, going between the minus four and the six. So we can say that therefore, from the graph, let's just put that in, from the graph, we can see that y is less than zero when, or four, let's just say four, values of k which are between minus four and six. And the between statement is written like this, between minus four and six. All right, so hope that's given you some idea if you were stuck on that question. But uh, if you're able to do it, great, all right?